Shawnee Morris is here from the Midlands Astronomy Club. How's the form, Shawnee? Uh, I'm in good form. I don't know about Virgin Orbit, though. Why not? Uh, not everything went according to plan in the late hours of last night slash early hours of this morning, unfortunately. So Richard Branson wants to become the next Elon Musk. Elon Musk, uh, more than 20 years ago, got this idea. Why don't we send rockets into space, but mm. at a fraction of the price of That's NASA right. and all a of private, the other privatisation of the space sector. Correct. Yeah. And it took Elon quite a few attempts to get it right. Mm. And it looks like Richard Branson is suffering the same pain. He is. And uh, unfortunately for him, what seemed like what was going to work as clockwork, because everything has been tested and tried for so long, you know, the rocket came over from California. He has his own fleet of Boeing 747s. So his technique was to get the rocket airborne by aircraft carrier first and then launch it at a high altitude where it would then boost itself into orbit. Everything had been running smoothly. He actually had nine paying customers for payloads on this flight last night. Wait a minute. How much equipment had they on board? I don't know the true value because that hasn't been released, but there were nine different payloads from four different countries on board. Uh, There was Poland, Oman, the UK, and a collaboration between the UK Defence Ministry and the European Space Agency on one of them as well. Suffice to say, a lot of very expensive equipment on board. Yes. No people. No people. Nothing alive. Uh, So this was going to be its first true uh, subscription service to space. So everything did actually take off as planned from Cornwall. Spaceport, Spaceport Cornwall is what has been set up. So this was the first trial out of that as a location too. Hence why south of Ireland, there was that zone set up with uh, which of our departments that they liaise with? I can't remember. Not probably transport, probably or Marine defense. maybe or Defence. Yeah. Yes, that there was a zone, you know, air, uh, boats stay out of the zone just in case there's a fallout. So the aircraft takes off, gets to its height off the Kerry coast. The rocket is dispatched, fires its engine, the main stage, and gets up there. I think it achieved almost 120,000 feet uh, which is technically space. Uh, the first stage separated. The main engine of the second stage fired, one of two burns, but it was during the duration between the lull from the first burn, waiting for the second burn, that this anomaly occurred. And it wasn't able to get to final orbit insertion. And safely then it would have deployed the satellites. So from what I could find this morning, the latest before I came down here was that we don't know if it is in a degrading orbit or did it just fall back to the sea. And Virgin is being very tight-lipped on that at the moment. Maybe because, you know, you could have boats that are in the sea that will wait for these kind of debris mm. pieces to come down because it's like treasure hunting in a way. It didn't go off course anyway. It's not going to land on our heads. It's not going to. That's why they put it over the sea because like Cape Canaveral in Florida, it has the entire Atlantic Ocean to mm. fall back on if something were to happen, which history has shown us has. Uh, likewise from French Guiana or Guinea, is it, uh, in Africa, where you, the European Space Agency used. That falls over water as well. By Kanur in Kazakhstan, it'll eventually go over the Indian Ocean. So that's your fallback so that you're minimizing the potential impact on ground on people. So, so when they say an anomaly took place... Do we know what that anomaly was? They haven't. They've remained, uh, Virgin Orbit have remained quite tight-lipped about it. Now, their feed finished just after midnight, the live feed. But it was at 12 minutes to midnight when they declared that it was a failure. But they have not released any details of that failure yet. My guess is that something happened between the first and the potential second burn, that maybe the engine had shut down or was there a fuel line problem or was the computer registering a sensor that failed and therefore was going to abort the mission for the safety of the ground uh, and let the payload perish. So, uh, yeah, all eyes, all media eyes are on Virgin Orbit at the moment to find out what is wrong. But it still sets some positive milestones. You know, this is the first time from... English soil, UK soil, that it has been attempted, and successfully, it got technically to space. If you get in your car and travel at 60 miles an hour, you'll be in space in that hour. That's how far ahead of us the boundary Mm. between terrestrial Earth and outer space is. So it achieved that. The the first stage rocket, it did what it was supposed to do. The aircraft uh, carrier landed with no anomalies to itself, so they know that will be used again, the 747. So there's a lot of positives still to take away from this, you know, but look, success is born out of failure. 
You know, we, we've talked off air about that with Elon Musk and uh, yeah. how he had to do his engine work. I think at the same time, if it's based in Cornwall, I'd like them to head the other direction next time. <laughs> it, that won't ever happen because you just have to have that, you know, that safety berth, which is yeah, the water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But listen, it'd be Ireland next door. You know, Ireland has a burgeoning space industry as well. We've contributed to the James Webb Space Telescope, the Rosetta mission, the Giotto probes. So now we have a spaceport next door to which maybe we can get on board with the UK on future projects. Well, we've no shortage of space cadets, that's for sure. (laughs) Shawnee Morris is our resident space cadet from the Midlands Astronomy Club. Thank you very much.